When you extend the conversation, you silence the noise. What is going on? Welcome to This Week in Education. I'm your host, EJ Carrion, where every week we highlight educators, schools, and districts who are doing amazing work to impact students every single day. To get your weekly dose of insight, inspiration, and innovation, hit the subscribe button. In a year of unknown and massive changes, the way we tell our stories as educators have to adapt. The traditional ways of telling our story from quantitative data, such as academic gains, standardized tests, FAFSA completion, and college enrollment, has been distorted due to the ramifications of the pandemic. If we simply went off of our data, it would feel as if we're not hitting standards, which makes us devalue our efforts. The devaluing also opens the door for outside parties to scrutinize our work, such as lobbyists, capitalists, and regular citizens in our communities challenging what we do and why. My guest today is Dr. Joe Sanfilippo, who's the superintendent of Fall Creek School District in Fall Creek, Wisconsin, which is the home of the Mighty Crickets. Joe will share his perspective on how we can improve our story and prevent outsiders from chirping. You see what I did there? Crickets chirping? Come on, that was clever. All right, my name is Joe Sanfilippo. I'm a superintendent in the Fall Creek School District in Fall Creek, Wisconsin, home of the Fall Creek Crickets. And uh, I've been here for 11 years. The thing I get passionate about is seeing people kind of take a look at what their practice is and understand that they're doing great work. Because a lot of times what ends up happening is the, the work that happens in our space doesn't get known by people outside. And then we find our way, you know, our, we, we walk, we walk into a place that we don't know if we have value. And then we go home to a place that we don't know if we have value. And if we're always walking between those two places where we wonder if we have any value, then we're kind of, we walk without purpose in terms of the work that we do. The thing that we need to do here. And the thing that we need to do in schools is first of all, understand and put ourselves in the right mindset to recognize the greatness that happens around us. Like there are great things happening all over the place. If we're willing to just take a step back and realize that those great things ha are happening. The second thing that we need to do with that work is make sure that you acknowledge to the people around you that they're doing great things <laughs> because some people say, they tell me all the time, well, you know, Joe, it's the thought that counts. It's the thought. No, it's not. It's just not. It's not the thought that counts. It's the action on the thought that counts. Acknowledge to these people that you work with that they're doing great things. And if there's a way that you take those great things that are happening right in front of you and right around you and extend those conversations to people who weren't there, what inevitably happens is the people who you extend the conversation to come back and tell you or tell the other people that you're talking about, about the great things that are happening, because at some point somebody did it for them and it felt good. So when you extend the conversations in your building, they extend out of your building, and then you get to the place where you create value for the people that you serve. And I think that's a problem. That's a huge problem with what we do is we're always trying to get to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And until we take a step back and realize that we're changing the lives of kids on a daily basis, you just lay victim to whatever next in the checklist, in the checklist is. And that's the, that doesn't feel good to come to work when all you're doing is checking a box to get to the next thing. So how are you making sure that you are creating a culture where people want to recognize, acknowledge, and extend the great work that's happening with their colleagues. Because if you can create a culture where storytelling is at the root of what you do, you create an opportunity to change the conversation about what people are saying about you. A great example of how Fall Creek embodies this moment to momentum celebration of students, staff, and school stories is through social media campaigns. For instance, this semester they did a student who shines hashtag, which recognizes students and includes quotes from their educators saying something positive about them. It is a campaign like this that allows us to create a compounding effect on our story. Because when you highlight a student, the parents will then highlight the school by sharing the posts and talking to the community about the amazing work we're doing inside the building. Another approach Joe takes in compounding the story is by literally walking in value. He lives right across the street from the school. So it takes him one minute to walk from home to work, which to me is the closest thing to working from home without working from home. He uses this time to think. And when something clicks, he constructs a strong, dynamic, simple message about something he learned as a leader that relates to his school, but can provide value to other educators as well. The video series is called One Minute to Work Leadership Challenge. I remember earlier in my administrative career, I remember having a conversation with an incredible teacher. She was fantastic. You know, parents loved her, kids loved her, colleagues loved her. She was very well respected, incredible leader. 
And I said to her, had she ever thought about becoming a principal? And she laughed and kind of shrugged it off. And, you know, we just went on to a different topic and didn't talk about it again. But a couple days later, I was walking past her classroom and she asked me to come in. And I could tell she was frustrated and I sat down and she said that she'd been thinking a lot about the conversation that we had had. And she said all she ever wanted to do was be the best teacher she possibly could be. And in that moment, I made her feel like she was supposed to be something else. So the leadership challenge for next week is simply this. When you value people in the building, make sure you value who they are, not who you think they should be. <laughs> we spend so much time telling people they're not just a teacher. Make sure your actions reflect those words. Mine didn't. <laughs> I'm glad she said something, because hundreds of kids are better because she was their teacher. Just got to take care of each other. All right, people, that's all I got. We're all sitting together, man. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week, everyone, especially the incredible educators in Fall Creek, Wisconsin. Go Crickets. To be a part of Joe's One Minute Walk to Work Challenge, subscribe to his YouTube channel, which you can see in the description. Something Joe also brought up in the conversation is this term outsiders, which I asked him to explain. Who are these outsiders? 80% of the voting public don't have kids in school. So when 80% of the voting public don't have kids in school, then 80% of the voting public are making a judgment about you based on what happened to them when they were in school or to their kids when their kids were in school. So essentially what happens is somebody outside of your space is making a judgment about you based on what happened to them 25 years ago when they didn't get a second chicken sandwich at lunch or they got put against the wall at recess, or they got a grade they didn't deserve or the coach didn't play them. And then all of a sudden that becomes who you are as a second grade teacher. And that's not fair right? Because you're not doing anything that's happened before, like before then. But then all of a sudden that becomes who you are. People won't change the way they talk about school until we change the way that we talk about school. So when you're walking out around and you're saying, well, I'm just a teacher, I'm just a custodian, or I'm just a paraprofessional, or I'm just a bus driver, or I'm not just, I'm just, I'm only, I'm just. Like when you say that, when you say that you're just, when you say that you're only, you devalue all of your work. But not only do you devalue your work, you devalue the work that everybody is doing in that space, right? And you give the person that you're talking to license to do exactly the same. Because there's no chance that they change the way they talk about us if we don't change the way that we talk about us. Outsiders will tell our story and devalue our work when we do not speak up and advocate for ourselves. Lucky for us, we have Joe and the Mighty Crickets who created a repellent to prevent negativity from entering the leadership ecosystem. We have three rules as a board. The answer is always we. We always keep our dirty laundry in house and we never give up the opportunity to say something great about our school. And if we live by those three things, and I can really take that third one on, never giving up the opportunity to say something great about our school, we change the conversation about how schools are looked at. And that's exactly what we're here for. Thank you, Joe and the Mighty Crickets for giving me the opportunity to not just share your story, but to share real advice and motivation that allows us to infuse storytelling in the classroom and the boardroom. Thank you for watching This Week in Education. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe so I can see you every week. In the meantime, keep changing the world.